there are many scenarios where the raw data itself is not enough for us to complete a task efficiently. For example, we might need to add manual information such as categorization, commentary, maybe adding a date last action or date received, possibly even a reference number. And that's what we're looking at in this video. How can we add manual information into our query so that we can then complete our task efficiently? And we do this through using a self-referencing query. So if you're ready, let's get started. For our example, we've downloaded some bank statements in a CSV format from our banking system. What we want to do is to combine them together and load them into Power Query. We then want to add some manual commentary so we know what each row of that bank statement is for. To do this, we're going to follow a four step process. Step one is to get that CSV information and to combine it together and to make sure that we have a unique reference. We'll then load that as a query table in Excel. Step two is then to add the commentary to that table. Step three is to take that table, load it back into Power Query, and then merge the commentary back with the original table. Finally, we're going to add more data into our query to make sure that our commentary stays in sync with the correct line of our bank statement. So let's start working through this example. Step one is to connect to the source data. So for our example, I'll go to data, get data from file from folder. I'll then navigate to the place where those files are saved. In my example, I've got them saved in a file called files. And then I'll click open. Okay, so Power Query has now connected to that folder. It's identified that there are three files in there. And I'm going to click transform data. Okay, so Power Query has now connected to that folder. We want to combine all those files together. So I'm going to click on the combine files icon. And now Power Query has identified that we have a CSV file and it's brought up a preview of that CSV file. For now, we're just going to click OK. What Power Query is going to do now is to create a lot of helper queries for us. These helper queries help us to combine all the files inside a folder. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we don't have a unique reference number. This is a big problem because if we want to merge data inside Power Query, we need to have a unique reference to merge that data on. So we need to add a unique reference. You can see that we have our source name. If we can add a row number into each of our CSV files, we can combine that row number and the file name to create a unique reference number. So I'm going to go back to my transform sample file query, and I'll go to add column and index column. That will now add a index column or a row number into each of our CSV files. So that when I come back to my combined files query, it will now have an index that goes from zero to three because there's three rows on that first CSV file. In the second CSV file, we have another zero to three. So we have this row count inside each file. Now we want to combine the index and this file name together. So I'm going to click on index, select source name. And then when I come to transform and I can then go to merge columns. In the merge columns dialog box, I'm going to set my separator as a colon. and I'm going to call this unique ref. Then I'll click OK. Now, a key thing to note is that if your data already has a unique reference, you don't need to worry about this because your data already has the reference number that we need. But in our scenario, we didn't have a unique reference, so therefore we had to create this reference using this method. Okay, we've got our data. Let's just check out data types. It's got unique ref, date, type, description, amount. That should probably be a decimal number, as should the balance. So let's change those. And now let's load those into Excel. So I'll click home and then close and load. Okay, that's now loaded that query into Excel. So we can now move on to step two, which is adding the manual information to this table. In this scenario, we're adding commentary. So I'm going to add a column called commentary and let's add some draft commentary in there. 
So let's say that this value is a duplicate payment. This 450 we need to investigate. And then also this item here, we just need to ask Dave. Dave knows all about this stuff. So let's ask Dave. Right, we've now got our commentary. We've added that. That's it, that's it for step two. We're now ready to move on to step three. In step three, we take the table with our commentary column, we load it back into Power Query, and then we merge the commentary back with our original query. So I'll select a cell inside the table, then click data, and then from table slash range. Okay, so that's loaded that query. It's currently called files two. Let's rename this to manual info. This will help us to identify which query we are working with. So now we'll click on our files query and then from the home ribbon, we can select merge queries. In the merge queries dialog box, we have our files query initially, and then we want to merge with our manual info query. And we're going to merge on that unique ref. So we'll select both of those and then click OK. Right, we can now expand our manual info column but we only want to add the commentary column. So we'll unselect all of those and select commentary, and we don't want the original column name as prefix, then we'll click OK. So that's now completed that stage. So now we can load this query back into Excel, but we created the manual info query in this session. So what we need to do is to go to Home, Close and Load dropdown, and then go to Close and Load 2. In the Import Data dialog box, we want to click only create a connection and then click OK. Now what that does is that it creates a commentary column, which is from our query. The manual column that we created earlier is now called commentary two. We don't need this column anymore. So we'll right click, delete table columns. And that's it. We've now created our self referencing query so that we can add commentary to our bank statements. I've now added a new bank statement into our folder. You can see it there, so it's the 1st of January, 2024. Now what we want is that when we refresh our query, the commentary must remain in exactly the same line as it currently is, not by position, but by reference number. So the duplicate payment should always relate to customer alpha and 40. The need to investigate needs to relate to customer delta and the 450, and ask Dave needs to relate to Microsoft and minus 40. So let's try this out. From the data ribbon, I'll click refresh all. You can see there that the data has been added at the top for January. They are our four January lines, but the most important thing is that our commentary for our duplicate payment our need to investigate and ask Dave have remained in the same place. So they are against the same rows. Right, now let's update some of our commentary. Let's remove ask Dave and let's say mobile phone provider to investigate. So now when we refresh this, you can see that that commentary has now been updated. Ask Dave has disappeared and we now have the new to investigate line. So this is how we can add manual information into our query. Now there's one important thing that you need to be aware of, and that's the fact that this commentary or manual information exists in kind of a temporary state. It's only there because that unique reference number is there. If in our source data, that unique reference ceases to exist, then our commentary will cease to exist. We can't get it back. So we need to be careful about how we handle those inputs and how we handle backups to make sure that we don't lose any of the information that we want to keep. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and why not head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our training programs to show you how you can reclaim time with Excel so that you get to go home on time more often. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.